Hello and welcome to Good Clean Gaming. I'm your host, Jalendo, and today we're playing some Galactic Civilizations 3. Um, I There's some other games that are coming out that I wanted to play, but I love this game. There's a new version out, and I was waiting for it to get stable, and I promised you guys I would come back with this game, and so I did. Um, this game will come first, and then other games will come after I get this one up for you guys to watch. Um... So we're going to start a new game, and I promised a long-running game, probably with trading and diplomacy and something very different from the first playthrough I did, which it was just kind of like a test run. Uh, we're going to play with all the races on the map, and I've, I've done a lot of testing, and I've found the, the right map size that you guys will, will get the most excitement out of, I think. And uh, we're going to play with the Iridium Corporation. Now, this is the uh, kind of the business people, the traders. You could think of, you, if you like Star Trek, you can think of the Ferengi um, kind of race in this game and they are the uh, they are the iridium according to this uh description it says the iridium are an ultra capitalistic civilization ruled by a number of multi-planet corporations firm believers in the power of free markets they specialize in economic and cultural growth sounds very ferengi doesn't it they have a rare traits of productive clever economical fertile traders and adventuresome and those things do what pretty much what you expect them to do um, feel free to pause the video to see all the tooltips. Um, I'll try not to read too much for people who have seen the first series, but I will be reading some of the more interesting things. So, uh, entrepreneurs and, uh, and wealthy. These are new in uh, Beta 5. Entrepreneurs, uh, this gives trade routes uh, an approval bonus to both parties and to extra trade routes. So, they are very good traders. And wealthy starts with tourism available, or excuse me, enabled, and with extra credits. So, this this whole race is all about money, 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 money. And making money work for you. So we have the huge map. I found after a lot of testing that huge with tight clusters makes for a very, very exciting map. Uh, I wanted to make it where it's big enough to where it's exciting and we can include all the races, but also small enough to where we're not waiting for 10 episodes to see our first, you know, other organization or other um, civilization on the galaxy map. And huge seems to be the perfect balance for the kind of game we're going for. Um, we're leaving everything default because I kind of want to give you guys a stock, uh, the stock experience of Galactic Civilizations 3. Kind of what you can expect out of release and the way the game's designed around the default settings. It seems like that's the right choice. We also have victory conditions are all set to default. So every victory type is enabled. Who knows what's going to happen. Uh, game settings are all default. Normal, 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 normal. Uh, uh, I did set the minor races to abundant because I really like minor races and if there's one setting I can change and deviate from the quote stock experience of Galactic Civilizations 3 it'd be this one because I like to see a lot of races uh, and civilizations on the galaxy map it just makes for an exciting game for me. And I have added all of the races and I'm going to set them to normal because I, I, I haven't actually tried the like i said the default experience with galactic civilizations 3 i kind of want to see what that feels like how how good that feels and i think it's probably the right move because i i've read in the patch notes they have made a lot of improvements to the ai about how they attack and how they declare war and how they strategize so i kind of want to step back from the from the like ultra high um difficulty level and just try the default and see how it feels see if it's for me um I still read that they're planning on a May release of this game, and it's looking pretty good. Uh, it's still a little rough around the edges, and they have a lot of features to add, but they're working hard on it, and we'll have to see if they make their May release date after all. Uh, cheering for you guys. Go uh, go developers. Uh, we got, This is the description of the... Uh, uh, kind of the introduction as you log into the game for this race that you're playing. The Iridium Corporation is the apex corporate entity of the ultra-capitalistic society, the only organization capable of entering into contracts on behalf of the entire Iridium people. The enti entire Iridium culture is based on a firm, even fanatical belief in the power of free markets. Although no strangers to weaponry, all research is first considered through the lens of mutual cooperation. The destructive cost of warfare is often too great for Iridiums to seriously consider. It remains to be seen how well this philosophy will fare when introduced to more closed-minded races. So strengths and weaknesses. The Iridiums are excellent at research and development and quick to maximize the economic potential of any new discovery. Their ships are also far-ranging, enhancing their natural inclination to trade. 
growth potential is limited somewhat by their species slower than average population growth. Alrighty. So we start with, uh, if you haven't seen the previous series, we start with a shipyard and one planet. We start with a colony ship that can then colonize all races, I believe, start with, I haven't tried out all races, but typically this is the case. All races start out with one planet they already have colonized, a colony ship, and one planet that is colonizable in their starting area. So you can go ahead and just boop, put that colony ship over there, name it whatever you want. We're going to keep default because I kind of like the the you know the flavor and the lore of the uh of the race i'm playing so it's called valis it says finally after their long journey your colonists set foot on a alien world untold effort and struggle were required to get even this far but it's only the beginning the galaxy is filled with wor 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 bleh, worlds for the taking the cinematics that play in this game are absolutely beautiful even though they are short they just give you this great feel for what the game is Here's our first uh, first colony. We haven't looked at our home, our capital yet, but this is our first colony. Uh, we have uh, on the map, on the, you know, the world map, you can see little things that pop up um, as there's a chance you'll get these. And they're, the number of squares you get and also the land masses and all that are kind of procedurally generated. So on this one, we got Monsadium Disp Deposit. And these min minerals boost the yield of farms when used as a fertilizer. So it's an improvement to food plus two level two population. So that's actually really good considering um, we're very bad at growing people. <laughs> and farms give you more people. Um, so... Yeah, let's take a look at our capital real quick. Our capital has, looks like we got two little bonuses here. The first bonus is rare earth metals, which gives uh, plus two to research, plus one to manufacturing. We also have this one, which is a haven. Uh, this idyllic region is so beautiful that living here makes people happy. Plus two approval and plus one to wealth. Um, I don't think we actually have to build the specific stuff on here to make them work. So I, I don't think I have to build a research factory to get the research out of this. I don't know, though, because that, that actually might be what it's doing. Uh, I never actually tested that. I don't remember, remember testing that in my original playthrough. Um, since it is... I kind of want to make my base planet a, a manufacturing planet, but I will throw a research laboratory on that one. And this is plus two approval, plus one to wealth. I'll throw a free market on this one. Um, just because that'll balance it out pretty well. But first, I'm going to throw on the basic factories. And that the way this game works is that when you build something close to something else, um, if it has a bonus to it, and you look at the bonus to adjacent improvements, if it has a bonus to it, it'll apply that bonus based on where you put it. So, for instance, as an example, I put a basic factory here, and then I put a basic factory here. You see they get plus one for being next to it. So these, this one gets plus one. And this one gets plus one because they're right next to each other and they do the same stuff. So they bo boost each other. Um, instead of doing that, you also get that from your capital. And see, so you get for building next to the capital, you get plus one to basically anything you build next to it. So the first thing I want to build next to my capital, I'm going to build a basic factory because I want to immediately get... I want to have a, uh, and we'll, by the way, between episodes, I'll try to do a, a, a little sound check and make sure everything's audible and you maybe raise up the sound of the UI and the clicks and everything, or or go down if I need to. We had some bad sound issues in the first playthrough of this. Um, so I want to add enough factories to start building things we need. Um, I want to have at least one like purely factory planet. That's probably what, what this one's going to be. And this will give us all the bonuses we need. And I'll throw one here. And this will make everything... This will give us a lot of manufacturing in case we need to mass produce ships and stuff like that. Um, in fact, yeah, I'm going to go with uh, free market here. Uh, cancel that one. Go free market. Go with a research lab there and another uh, basic factory there. And so the idea is this... this planet is going to be useful for mass producing ships mass producing buildings powering our empire and then for our second place uh it looks like we got precious metals here plus two to wealth plus one to research vein of precious metals makes this an ideal spot to make some profit i am going to throw some uh, free market on here free market free market and this is going to be for helping us to afford to buy things so you know when I have an idea of uh, how to play one of these strategy games, 4X games, I typically like to put the stuff away from the front lines, have that support the shipbuilding and 
you know, uh, defending the frontier and stuff like that. And the stuff in the on the outside, I like to so I like to focus on them supporting themselves and doing what's best for their planet. Whereas these in the core of the of the civilization, I want to make them focus on supporting those border planets. So production and wealth kind of do that. Uh, I'll put research and um, influence and well, my research and other stuff further away from the center. Um, hmm. So that's going. We need to get our prospector. Prospector is our survey ship. We only get one of these, and you have to be really careful careful with it. We're going to go ahead and have it auto survey, just because I'd rather it kind of handle itself. Uh, we are on a huge map, and if it does release in May, um, I want to speed this along fast enough to where uh, we can actually complete the series before it actually gets released. <laughs> Um, so I set my scout on explore as well. And they'll just auto explore. I won't micromanage them. Like I said, huge galaxy. Don't really want to be sp oh, having you guys watch me do that. Um, so research. They changed the look of this robot guy. He's a little darker, a little shinier. Um, and uh, if you watched the first series, you remember how he looked. He was more you know, lighter colored. Um, so I haven't actually looked to see if they've made any changes to the research. But the first thing I kind of want to do... Let's see, interstellar travel gives us improved sensor. I will go through these between episodes so that I know exactly what I want to go after so you guys don't have to sit through it. And I'll explain it while we're playing uh, when you're actually watching me. Uh, duh, duh, duh. But for now, I want to make sure I don't make a bad decision this early. I kind of want to get Universal Translator because you start hitting other civilizations uh, fairly quickly. And I don't know about huge, but I know on the smaller maps you do. Uh, da, 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 Iridium store Customer relations allows construction of basic economic buildings Adds trade route Let's go for universal translator Because we do want to be a diplomacy slash trading um, race And so it's good to have those early diplomacy uh, techs ready to go When you meet your first race um, We probably want to build a colony ship in our This is our shipyard And these are the ships available currently um, If you haven't seen this before Colony ship, this one is probably what we want to build uh, several of because we're going to hit a bunch of really close by systems with inhabitable planets, hopefully, and we're going to want to capitalize on grabbing those before anybody else does. So we're going to go ahead and make several and just have them queued up ready to go when we find those other planets. We're probably going to find the planets before we actually get done building those. And now we're about to leave turn one because I think we've done everything we really want to do. Um, I don't think I need to show anything else until we keep going so turn and all the ships move and now we're going to be entering turn number two uh research advances buildings advance etc um don't need to really do anything between these early turns Ooh, looks like we're going to have our, our first in a habitable planet over here um it's called delamet delamet delamerick can't even pronounce it um, as you can see down here, if you actually zoom out, you see all the little points. These are the stars where presumably there could be planets around them. And some people think, well, now you know where all the stuff is, so why don't they have a fog of war that doesn't show that stuff? Well, you can, you can turn that on. But I kind of like it because, you know, if you look out in space and you're going to build a ship to go out in space, you're going to be able to see little points of light and say, I want to go there. Even if you don't have any telescopes whatsoever, <laughs> you're going to be able to see a bright light. Um, so... Even even without technology to see what those things are, you still would know, hey, I can go towards that. So it kind of makes sense to have those dots in the fog of war, in my opinion. Keep turning because we don't really need to really manage between turns this early. Uh, we don't have a colony ship, so there's no reason to go up here yet. Universal translated a, uh, a translator. A crowdsourcing effort to analyze the fragments of alien speech we've received has resulted in complete understanding of their languages. The universal translator developed alongside this effort will let us communicate with our future customers. I love how each race has um, has uh, their own flavor text. Like if you remember the Dringan flavor text, every single thing, every single research that you did, no matter what it was, was always related to eating other races or destroying their planets or taking them over. Because that's what the Dringen do. They're very warlike. They take stuff over. Now we're playing the corporate people, the, the business people. And so 
they're talking about future customers and crowdsourcing efforts and stuff like that when they have their flavor text for any of their research uh, researches. So it's that's I just love that um, that attention to detail that they put on that. Diplomatic specialization uh, would give us what exactly? Plus one to diplomacy. I, I kind of do want to just keep focusing on that in case we run into a, a, a race earlier than we think we will. Most likely, the first race we're going to meet is going to be like, you know, out this way somewhere or up this way somewhere. It, but we might hit them early enough to where we can actually start, you know, working with them a little bit. So continuing the turns. We're in turn six now. And turn seven. Uh, ooh, first anomaly survey. Your survey ship cautiously approaches the mysterious object. All sensors set to maximal gain. A secret of the universe, the first of many, is about to reveal itself to you. A single intact defender orbits the remains of a planet destroyed by a terrible weaponry of the Dread Lords of War. The crew, long dead, stand their posts, waiting for reinforcements that never came. Defender M0. So that means we got, I think that means we got a little ship, an extra ship we can use. So if I click on that, we have a new ship. Hooray! So I can set him to explore as well, and hopefully he'll go in a different direction from these guys. Because these guys, for some reason, are going in the exact same direction. And I really hate it when they do that. So, yep. Let them go ahead and handle their business up there. Keep on turning. One more turn to get that first basic factory created. Uh, it looks like our, our uh, shipyard is going to have four more turns before it can get a colony ship out, and we'll deliver it over here, see what kind of planet we can get out of that. I don't think I can actually see it till I land on it. Ooh, got another one up here, Class 8. That is awesome. Uh, this one is Thulium. That's for a mining star base. Dead, dead. You can actually zoom out. Uh, if you if you zoom out and you see these circles like this and circles inside circles, it tells you it's habitable. If there's just a circle with nothing inside, it's a dead planet. So this is a very quick way. If you want to just zoom out, you can see which ones are habitable, which ones are not. Turn 9. Turn 10, we have finished diplomatic reason, uh, reasoning. Now that we've identified what they are, our diplomats should be able to use the hand gestures and guttural ticks that various species respond well to. Choose new tech. And I believe we can check this out. Contracts and marketing. Uh, Iridium store and galactic showcase and starbase market and marketing specialization. This one it allows construction of embassies and formation of basic treaties. Embassy, um, blah, 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 blah. Read through that. Enjoy. Um, customer relations allows construction of basic uh, economic buildings, adds trade route. I kind of do want to get the trade route, but we haven't even discovered our first... Uh, first other race yet um how about this we'll go with capital investment and we'll see if we can upgrade those uh, factories that we're building right now as soon as we get that completed so this is going pretty well so far whoa load ship yes want to load some ships um yeah that looks good let's not take let's take population away from meridia and well, actually, no. Well, uh, uh, Valis is kind of trying to grow, trying to grow. So I'll go ahead and just take it from Meridia first. So there's our um, first colony ship loaded with colonists, ready to go. If we zoom out, we can see this one's an eleven, but this one ex uh, requires. We see it requires extreme colonization. We can't get that one. We can't get this one either. So it's also a class ten, but we can't get it. Class the higher the class, the better the planet. So we really want to get those as soon as we have the technology to do so. Um, we're going to go after this one up here because it's a class 8, and that's pretty good. If you look at our home planet, which is usually really good starting out, class 12. And the one we got here is class 4. So you can see we got four blocks, class floor, floor, uh, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So you can see the class gives you the number of hexes you're going to get. I think that's a good rule of thumb. I haven't actually tested that. So if I'm right, we should get eight hexes. Um, one of which will be the capital of the world, so seven available hexes, unless there's some kind of anomaly or special thing. Uh, turn, and we'll go to the next turn. We're up to turn number 12, I think. There are a thousand turns in this, and that's the turn limit, and then you can get a victory before that. So, yeah, yeah we got plenty of, plenty of ways to go. We're not going fast at all. That's a really nice planet. Can I just go over there? Can I go over there? Yes. 
that is class 13 that is absolutely beautiful so we'll go that way and uh research is now available capital investment our corporate empire must be built on a firm foundation we should ensure our initial colonial buildings are as capable and durable as possible again beautiful flavor text love that uh da, da, da. we got an industrial specialization this gives plus 10 percent manufacturing and on and leads to those two same for this it gives research specialization and this gives lowered re manufacturing cost i don't know the difference between increased total manufacturing and decreased manufacturing cost uh, that's unfortunate so i'm going to go with total manufacturing increased just like that um and yeah so we're well on our way to uh taking over the galaxy so i hope you guys enjoyed this episode please uh, if you would uh, click that subscribe button if you're interested in seeing more videos like this uh, that'll help you stay up to date when I release new videos. And uh, if, if you're not interested in that, then I hope to see you next time anyway. And uh, thanks for watching. And remember, keep it clean.